Brazil's economy is growing at a staggering pace and its energy needs are skyrocketing. To meet growing demand, the country is harnessing hydroelectric energy and building dams, some among the largest in the world. But not everyone is happy about it. We travel to the heart of Brazil's Amazon region where tensions are running high. For more than 1,200 miles, the Xingu River traverses Brazil's Amazonian region. In its lower basin, it twists and turns through small villages and the frontier city of Altamira. But that river, those communities, and the life of more than 13,000 indigenous Indians from at least 16 tribes may soon radically change. This is where part of the Belo Monte Wall will be built. The Belo Monte Dam, once completed, will be the third largest hydroelectric dam in the world, stretching some six kilometers. But it's become a lightning rod in Brazil. On one side, many indigenous groups, environmentalists, even celebrities, who insist the dam will destroy the environment and the people's way of life. On the other side, many business leaders and government officials who argue the dam will provide crucial electricity and jobs. If Belo Monte is really completed, the future of our region will be a desert. A desert of dead trees, animals, fish. It will be a disastrous future for all of us. Sheila Jaruna is an indigenous leader in Brazil who has become the face of the resistance against Belo Monte. These are the colors of nature. They also represent the blood that runs through our veins to allow us to continue our struggle in defense of the life of our people. Jiruna has spent most of her adult life in what is now a nearly four-decade-long crusade to stop the dam. The residue from work done on the big dam wall will contaminate this water downstream. For six months out of the year, this water will be stagnant, making it impossible to fish and to use the water. Construction of the $16 billion dam finally began in 2011 under the direction of Norta Energia, a consortium of energy companies from government and private industry. Once finished, it will play a significant role in helping Brazil produce enough electricity to power a country poised to become the world's fifth largest economy by 2015. But those opposed, like Jaruna, argue the costs are too steep. In building the dam, they say parts of the river will be diverted, causing a 60-mile stretch of water to dry out during Brazil's winter, leading fish stock to dwindle and making it nearly impossible for local boats to travel to and from Altamira to get food and medical care. Some scientists also fear that the hydroelectric dam will cause severe environmental damage by releasing a potent gas, methane, which contributes to global climate change. What's more, they argue that the dam, which requires large reservoirs, will flood many river communities, forcing thousands of people to be removed from the land and the life they have known for generations. Jiruna agreed to take us by boat to visit one of the communities most at risk, the Arara Indians, who live two hours downstream from where the dam will be built. Upon reaching Arara land, Hola. grateful villagers welcome Jiruna. The Arara's young chief, Zé Carlos, also welcomes her. Zé Carlos is worried that should the river dry up, his people will no longer be able to fish or travel by boat to get much-needed supplies. The first thing that happens to us is that we lose our ability to navigate, to come and go. 
We have no other access but by water. But many in the government and private sector stress that the energy Belo Monte will produce is essential to prepare the country for the next decade, when it will require an estimated 60% more electricity. Belo Monte. Belo Monte was one of the projects chosen to meet the Brazilian government's need to make energy available to the population. João Pimentel is an executive at Nota Energia. Just think that this project will provide cheap energy with the lowest impact on the environment for the local population and for the population of Brazil. He insists Belo Monte is vital to feed energy into an expanding national grid, dramatically connecting and improving the electricity supply in all parts of Brazil and ensuring more energy to schools, homes, health facilities and businesses. He says this will also solve a widespread national problem. Consistent power outages in the Altamira region are causing large headaches for businesses as well as the general population. Roving blackouts due to power outages. Similar power outages regularly occur in major cities around the country, leaving commuters stuck in traffic jams when signals abruptly fail. And during those blackouts, fueling chaos and crime. Supporters of Belamonte say that the dam will strengthen Brazil's commitment to using renewable energy, which already represents some 75% of the nation's total energy use. And there's more. They argue the dam will create tens of thousands of much needed jobs, something important to construction worker. Jose Alimsi Andradas, who moved from the south of Brazil to find work on the dam. At the beginning of construction, people are always against the project because they don't know it, they don't understand it. But every construction job that I have seen to this day has brought better things for the city, the people, for business. As for the concerns that a hydroelectric dam will impact the environment, Pimentel says original plans for Belo Monte have been revised. So methane gas will now be released at levels considerably lower than first expected. And when it comes to concerns about large sections of the river drying up, he says Norta Energia will create spillways to ensure that the river always maintains its current levels, even while Belamonte is under construction. There will not be a drying out of the river. This promotional video produced by Norta Energia explains how the company plans to keep local boats moving. To navigate this stretch, riverboats simply tie up to the tugboat to be towed either up or downstream. To the worry about flooding the land, Pimentel contends that while there will be some controlled flooding of areas, no protected indigenous land will be affected. There will be no impact on the indigenous territories. They will have their way of life preserved. Norta Energia has been forthright about its plans to flood the slums just outside of Altamira, but they've made provisions the company shows in its video. Families in Altamira, currently living in substandard housing, will receive new homes served by modern urban facilities. <laughs> But few of those opposed to the dam, including Jaruna, know exactly where those new homes and facilities will be installed and when. She takes us to the slum where she meets with residents like Nilvani Macedo. Where are they dumping us? There's no school, there's no health center. It's far from the supermarket and from everything. Norta Energia argues that, as mandated by Brazilian law, they have always kept locals and indigenous communities informed of all their plans, something indigenous leaders dispute. Many in the international community, including the United Nations, have stressed that concerted efforts be made to carry out adequate consultations with indigenous groups and that reaching consensus is critical, as five more Large hydroelectric dams have been approved in the Amazon and many more are believed to be on the way.
As for Jiruna, as she returns from her visit to the Arara land, she passes the exact place where the dam is being built. Workers are already busy. She's angry but energized. Her time with the Arara tribe has refocused her on stopping Belamonte. Going back to the village of my Arara brothers on the Xingu revitalizes me and gives me new strength to know that we will fight together. Still, as global economies expand and populations increase, it remains an open question exactly how to maintain that delicate balance between development and respect for the environment between a country's growing, very real needs and its commitment to traditional cultures.